Now here, Reimer preparing just to whiz the Yamaha down the straight to make sure that everything's happy with the clutch adjustments. Got to have a bit of free play on that clutch. Doesn't want it to slip. When the riders do get underway, we will have another warm-up lap and then a 12-lap race. Super Cup, now the premier British championship. And the publicity, obviously, from the television and the newspapers bringing the crowds in in their droves here to Alton Park. As I said earlier, what better place to spend a sunny afternoon. Rob McElnay and Ron Haslam just chatting like a couple of old chums. In fact, Steve, obviously, all the riders know each other so well and the best of friends. Well, yeah, they are. There's, uh, there's, there's, uh, I wouldn't say the best of mates, a lot of them, but they, they do associate with one another. And there's always a helping hand. If a rider has a problem or a team has a problem, then they're quite happy to lend a hand. Uh, it's a great uh, series of racing, and I think most people get on very well, and, uh, and everyone will help one another. And it's vitally important to keep the atmosphere going in motorcycle racing. Thank you. Man in the left of your picture, Ron Haslam, Rocket Ron, in the twilight, and I know you won't mind me saying that, the twilight of his career at 35 years of age, one of the most respected riders on the British scene. Has been away in the, on the Grand Prix scene for just about eight seasons, came home to the UK, 1991, to contest the British Championship for Norton. As teammate Trevor Nation, who you saw fall so heavily at the start of this race. Sounds as though something is about to happen here. We started with 40 riders. There are at least four who will not be going. So the restart, 36 competitors. Everyone clearing the grid now. So we have about a minute before things get underway. The yellow bike being bumped started in the middle of your picture there. Number 15, Matt Llewellyn, starting on the third row. Llewellyn from Glenfield. Just to remind you, McElnay on pole position, then it's Morrison, Reynolds lurking there, always the danger man. Terry Reimer complete with new clutch, and Ron Haslam, and I've never seen Ron looking more relaxed than he is right now. The sole Norton, of course, in the race. Ron Haslam, number 20. Terry Reimer, number one. John Reynolds, as the riders now prepare to do one more warm-up lap before the restart of the 750s, leg one for 12 laps. Very interesting to see uh, if uh, Carl Fogarty can make such an incredible start of the second row. I'm sure he'll be a little disappointed with his tremendous start. He got away there and he was thinking that he'd uh, made it, but then the race was stopped, so he'll be one of the disappointed riders, but I'm sure that it, uh, people like Rob McElnay and even Terry Reimer will be quite happy that there's a restart. It gives them a chance to really capitalise on their front row grid position. You can see on the circuit there was a lot of cement dust uh, yesterday in qualifying. There was some oil dropped, and the, and the circuit organisers they put down cement dust on the oil to soak it up, and it uh, it allows the uh, the oil to be soaked away and not to damage the circuit, and also allows the riders to see where there has been oil on the circuit. So it's uh, it it works in two ways really. Warm up lap then, just a couple of miles around this Alton Park circuit at cruising speed, just to make sure that everything is okay A with the bike and B with the circuit. Carl Fogarty number nine, then it's Jamie Whittam. Brian Morrison, the distinctive black livery of Ron Haslam on the Norton. A little bit of the cement dust billowing up there where the accident was, the dust which Steve Parrish referred to, having been put down on the petrol mixture. Tight. You can see the banking there on the hairpin. Just look at that dust. Imagine now this is the warm-up lap. It's going to be pretty hectic through there at racing speed. And a few laps, I would imagine, before that clears. Yeah, after the first lap, I think, uh, unfortunately, for the people at the back of the grid, they're going to struggle a little bit because the front people are going to kick up all the dust that they can to keep the people behind them. <laughs> It sounds terrible tactics, but it happens. Um, but to uh, say, so it does take away, it soaks the oil up and leaves the circuit hopefully gripping. I think after a couple of laps, we'll see it disappearing. Organisers have just advised us literally that the restart will take place over 14 laps, the full race distance. 38.78 miles then, once the green light goes. 
just referring very quickly to the dust on the circuit. Reminds me of the motocross days when some of the riders used to drag their feet deliberately on the ground to create dust. And an update on the fallen riders, there are no serious injuries resulting from that first lap incident. So we saw three of the four men up and walking about, the other one a few knocks and bruises, but no serious injuries. So good news indeed from Alton Park. Sorry about the delay, a couple more seconds and the 750s will be underway for 14 laps, 36 rounds. Does this sort of delay uh, unsettle the riders at all, Steve? Well, yeah, different riders take it different ways. Um, I think the more experienced riders will perhaps benefit from it because it'll unsettle the more inexperienced. But I hope the organisers have informed the teams and riders that it's still 14 laps and they've had a chance to top up the fuel because fuel that each team will, and rider will only run the minimum amount of fuel because fuel adds to weight and weight loses horsepower. So they run on the limits. But we're ready for the start now. The red light is up. Watch the lights. Top right of your picture. See if... Carl Fogarty can repeat that electrifying start from the second row. That's a good start by McElnay and Reynolds. So Rob McElnay and Ian Simpson again. Number seven, Ian Simpson. Third, fourth, right in the middle of the picture there with the yellow helmet, number seven. But he's in busy traffic indeed. Terry Reimer is in third. Yamaha teammate Rob McElnay is out in front, number eight. Championship leader then McElnay from Reynolds number six, then it's Terry Reimer, then it's Ian Simpson number seven, looking like Carl Fogarty having gone past number nine. Fogarty then up to fourth, Simpson down to fifth. This is Carl Fogarty, Team Silkeline Honda man, experience, TT competitor as well, Fogarty, from Blackburn in Lancashire. What a brilliant ride he had at Cadwell in the previous round. But look at Reynolds and Terry Reimer. Reynolds on the Kawasaki, number six, in between the two Yamahas. Oh, Rob Mackel, they made a blinding start there, so he'll be very happy with that. Qualified in pole position, he can now capitalise on the fast laps that he put in in qualifying. You need a clear run to, to get back to that sort of pace, and now's his chance to break away, and his main man that's chasing him, Ron Hasen, is back down the grid, so it's going to take Ron some time to pull through. Try and tell you where Ron Haslam is when they come across the start finish line at the end of this lap. But one lap completed almost then. Out in front, number eight, Rob McElnay. John Reynolds, number six, on the Kawasaki in second. Then it's Terry Reimer, number one, from Barnhurst in Kent. Reigning Super Cup champion, Carl Fogarty, number nine, is in fourth. And Haslam really having to work. Haslam in 11th place at the moment. So number 20, Ron Haslam, down in 11th place. Yeah, that was an atrocious start for Ron Haslam. There he is, down in 11th spot now. So he's got an awful lot of work to do. And there's a lot of very formidable riders up in front of him. So he's got to work very, very hard to keep his championship hopes alive. Just gone past number 25, Mike Edwards from Wigan. So Haslam then in 11th. Ahead of him, it looks like Ray Stringer. It's, no, it's not Ray Stringer. I beg your pardon. That's Mark Linscott. Mark Linscott from Mottingham in South London. Linscott number 18 then, with Haslam breathing down his neck. This is the race lead at the moment. Number 8, Rob McElnay. Reynolds giving it everything he's got on the Kawasaki. Third is the best he's done so far. But the 1, 2, 3, 4 at the front of the bunch really going for it. A brilliant start, Steve, to the 750s. It is a start, and I think I was expecting Rob McElnay to put in some burst, uh, some fast laps early on, but he doesn't seem to be able to break away from John Reynolds. John Reynolds is pushing very, very hard. Also is Terry Ryman and Carl Fogarty. Carl Fogarty is the man that's come through the pack to join the front leading four, so I think we're going to see a battle royal. The gloves are off here for the first round of race. A long way to go here. 14 laps the full distance, so we have to settle ourselves just as much as the riders have to settle themselves at this Alton Park circuit because the first four now over the line but in fifth place two behind them it's Jamie Whittam who's leading a three-man charge for fifth, sixth and seventh. Terry Reimer's gone through into second now as they went into Lodge Corner there. Reimer took the inside line, but Reynolds has gone back round the outside of him. So these two are really battling it out. Rob McElnay will be quite happy to see this going on behind him. Not that he is watching it, but that'll be slowing the two of them up. Reimer's looking for the inside there, nearly runs into John Reynolds, but he's got the inside line. He should be able to get through Island Corner first, and he does. Island then, up towards now the very fast 
I beg your pardon, bottom gear right hand, or just look at the camera as Reimer flicks it through there. On the inside, Reynolds, and still Fogarty, but Reynolds now in third because the two locked tight Yamaha men are out there first and second. Reynolds, number six, still in third, just look at him riding the socks off. And a massive wheelie on the 750, Kawasaki. He's having to work hard to keep the circle in. Honda of Carl Fogarty, number nine, behind him. Back up into second again goes Reynolds. So this duel now between Terry Ryan and John Reynolds, I suspect both of, both of whom are riding here at Alton Park for the first time in serious style. And meanwhile, the battle is letting Rob McElnay get away. McElnay now stretching the gap something like 1.37 seconds it is at the moment. And right behind them, the rest of the field now winding them in. So we're going to have a seven-man tussle for the lead here. Steve. Yeah, well, often the case, three riders trying for the same piece of track is not possible, and it ends up with no one being on the right line. This can slow them up. You're going to look at Kerry Ryman now. He's tucked in behind John Reynolds. He's going to have a look down the inside here. He's got the inside line, but can he... If he get, he's got through, but Reynolds will try to go back around the outside of him now, and Reynolds gets on the power, but Ryman does seem to have the line now. Look at Fogarty, number nine, Carl Fogarty, climbing all over the back of these two as Terry Reimer goes through on the inside of John Reynolds. So Reynolds, number six, down in third again. Carl Fogarty, fourth, is the best he's done in this, the restart. He led the early proceedings before the race was stopped. And there's now something like 100 yards between race leader Rob McElnay and the fourth place man, Carl Fogarty. But he could put a tent over the battle for second, third and fourth. Terry Reimer might be just a little bit rusty, possibly, not having ridden here at Alton Park before. Well, that's right, Terry is still learning the circuit, but on top of that, Terry Reimer, and we have a faller here, is up and they'll be trying to clear the machine as quick as possible, but it does look like it's deposited something on the track, so we might have to see some more cement. That's meanwhile, John Reynolds nips through again as they go into Nickerbrook. Oh, great stuff. Three to bit, that's gone, but just look at it. Look at the battle now for second, third and fourth. By no means is John Reynolds having this one his own way. Terry Reimer has been in second place more times than I could count already and has been relegated to third. Meanwhile, Carl Fogarty, who is possibly one of the hardest riders out there in terms of what he puts into it, and you can certainly see just how hard Carl Fogarty works. He climbs all over the Honda, and it's number nine we're talking about now. Carl Fogarty looks over his shoulder. He knows the fourth place is safe for the moment. The chasing bunch, however, as they go over the line again. Up into second place goes Reimer, Reynolds, and look at Fogarty on the inside, but not quite. Yeah, well, Terry's having a tough time. Well, I was about to say earlier, Terry's running his, his superbike specification machine, which is a little down on power because you have to run standard carburetors. So that's a completely stock carburetor model machine that he's on, as his number one machines are in Japan. So he's down a little bit on top speed, but he's certainly making up for it around the corners. Reynolds there in an almighty wobble on the Kawasaki. But hanging on to it, just didn't back off at all. A quick blip of the throttle there, down two gears. Second gear around here, driving hard, feeding in the power from the 750. Lots of torque in third place then. Reimer now just easing away three or four machine lengths. Reynolds looks as though he might well fall victim and a great twitch from the Yamaha as well. The bikes don't seem to be handling too well around here. Well, it is, uh, as I said earlier, it's a very, very, it was a very, very bumpy circuit. circuit. They've resurfaced it, but there are still quite a few undulations there. But the twitching and weaving you'll see is as the tyre seems to break traction, it starts to wheel spin, the suspension winds itself up and then flicks back again. And that's what's causing the machines to twitch and weave around. It's putting all that horsepower down through a tyre, which is no bigger than your, the palm of your hand. With the undulations on this circuit, as the riders crest some of the hills, they actually lose sight of the circuit. Look at Haslam moving up. Haslam has gone past Ray Stringer. So the all-black outfit of Ron Haslam has gone past Ray Stringer and is now making his way up through the field. Ahead of him, it looks like Ian Simpson as well is in the fray. Back with Ron Haslam then, who had to work very, very hard. He was 13th first time round. Then 11th, there's number 7, Ian Simpson, the man who was in second place before the restart. About to come under the Haslam hammer, I think. Then it's Jamie Whittam who will be next on the target board. The speed of the Norton, as Haslam just piled on the coals past Ian Simpson. The superior power of the Norton brought Haslam right up the back mudguard of Jamie Whittam. 
on the Grants Castrol Suzuki. Haslam then moving up one at a time. Is it possible for Haslam to catch up with the leading three? Well, I think he's going to struggle, especially with Rob McElnay now, as he's well out in front, but Haslam can make up the ground because he does have the speed. You'll see he'll follow Jamie Whitten here as they nip through the corners, and then as soon as they get on the main straight, he's now onto the main straight, so Haslam could easily get along the inside of Jamie Whitten at this point. If he could just get on the inside, he's got the inside line, but I don't think there's quite enough time. No, he's going to have to wait till they get onto the back straight, but the Norton is very, very fast at the moment, and Haslam... Passing, the, passing at the early stage of the race wasn't so bad, but now he's up against some very fast riders, Jamie Whitten being one of them, and he's going to take a lap or so to pass him, I believe. Looks like a tail ender, number 31 in, in front of them. That's John Williams from Grimsby. This the battle now for second and third place. Number one, Terry Reimer, is in the runner-up position in the race. Number six, John Reynolds, is in third. Still fighting off a determined challenge by number nine, Carl Fogarty. Then the pursuing battle. Haslam, then, is now up to sixth place. So number 20, Haslam, and that looks like fifth. That looks as though Haslam has gone through into fifth. I confirm that, but certainly it looks as though Haslam is on the charge. Yeah, well, Ron now has a large gap to, to catch up to uh, John Reynolds, so he's got a big problem now. Well, not a big problem, but he's, uh, he's got a long way to go now before he gets anyone else in his sights. Rob McElnay has just scorched round in a 137.2, so that's the fastest lap and also a lap record. Riding with the second place man in the race, Terry Reimer, number one. This is the battle for third and fourth between John Reynolds, number six, and Carl Fogarty, who looks over his shoulder every single time he exits the Shell Oils corner there, almost knowing that Ron Haslam is coming into the... And look at Haslam! Just look how close Haslam is getting now, and he's dragging that bunch along with him. So, a whole freight train of activity behind Ron Haslam, who's now closing on the leading bunch. McElnay fading out of sight under the bridge there. This is the battle for second, third and fourth. About to be joined by Ron Haslam who wants to come and play as well. I can't understand, Steve, why Ron Haslam can't get the Norton off the line quicker. Front row position and he was 13th round on the first lap. Yeah, it's a, it's a very tricky situation as uh, we've always spoke about. It's, uh, it's feeding the power in, not getting the front wheel too high in there because that's very easily done. With so much horsepower, the machine just wants to revolve itself around the back wheel. Once the front wheel's in the air, you have to close the throttle, get it back down again. Also, it's so easy to burn your clutch out. You can give it too many revs, slip the clutch too much, as Terry Reimer had a slight problem in the, the first start. So. Ron's got to uh, just feed the power in just right, but uh, I think uh, we'll perhaps see him get a better start in the second one and see a much more interesting race because he's closing in on John Reynolds so much at the moment. Carl Fogarty, number nine then, having gone past John Reynolds, is up to third place. Third place man then on the Honda. So Yamaha leads, Yamaha in second, Honda third, Kawasaki fourth, and the Norton in fifth. Now Ron Haslam has taken the fastest lap, so it's just showing that Ron is closing the gap. He's put in the fastest lap, so Rob McElnay is going to be getting pit signals that Haslam is closing. They're the two main leaders in the championship, and the main thing that Rob McElnay wants to do is to beat Ron Haslam. Fifth place in closing then, number 20, Ron Haslam. Now that gap between John Reynolds and Ron Haslam is coming down visibly. And look at Carl Fogarty, has gone past Terry Reimer up to second place. Number nine, Carl Fogarty then on the Honda, is now splitting the two Yamahas. And Reynolds has come back in the fun as well, and Haslam is now right with them. Quickest man on the circuit at the moment, Haslam. And the whole bunch, second, third, fourth and fifth places, are now just a little bit closer to Rob McElnay. So that gap coming down as well, this one's going to go all the way down to the wire, I'm sure. Eight laps. John Reynolds gone through now, so into third place. So. And Haslam passes Terry Reimer, the speed of the Norton, he just poor, powered past Terry Reimer as they went over the start and finish straight. Ron Haslam is charging. Well, we had the watch running here to see what the gap was between Reynolds and Haslam, but my goodness me, the gap between McElnay and Fogarty, four and a half seconds. Haslam is now up to fourth place, like you wouldn't believe. Third, as I say it, is really finding his form. Look at Ron Haslam coming through from the back on the Norton. Third place, next man under his sights. Looks like being 
number nine, Carl Fogarty. Haslam really has got the bit between his teeth. If uh, Ron Haslam can get close enough to Carl Fogarty through the chicane here, the Falston chicane, this will give him chance to power down the straight and get on the inside for the Nicker Brook. So it's going to be interesting to see how Ron gets out of the chicane here. Now's the point. He's putting the power down. 140 brake horsepower. The front wheel lifts. If he can just get alongside Carl Fogarty at this point, but I don't think he can. The straight's not long enough. He's going to have to wait until he gets back round to the start and finish straight. John Reynolds, number six, then in fourth place on the Kawasaki, has broken away with Ron Haslam. Terry Reimer, I suspect, has a mechanical problem because he slipped off the leading bunch and the way that Ron Haslam went with him, went through him, was unbelievable. Rob McElney then, number eight, out in front, but he'll be well aware of what's going on behind him because the pit crew will be telling him that Haslam is making progress like there's no tomorrow. He's in third place at the moment. And Reimer now has dropped well off the bunch, about to be gobbled up by Morrison, Whittam and Ray Stringer. Well, Haslam is having a harder time to pass Carl Fogarty. I say the nearer the front you get, the harder it is to pass a rider. But this is his place. He'll go into Nickerbrook here. Oh, he's gone through on the inside. I was about to say he'll get on the power coming out. But Ron is charging. He's pushing that machine so hard at the moment. Now he's got a battle on because he's got to catch Rob McElnay and he's about... Three and a half seconds behind Rob Mack at the moment. White power suspension on the Norton, getting him round beautifully there. Now this is it, up on the inside, Steve. Comes through nicely. Yeah, I'm sure that will have given Carl Fogarty a real surprise because that's not the normal place that Ron would have gone through. I'd have expected him to do it on the exit, on the power, but he didn't. He broke much later than Carl Fogarty and pulled the machine in time. He's charging. Whether he can see Rob McElnay in the distance now is another matter. Lap 10 then, the full race distance 14, so still time for Ron Haslam to do it. But we now need to know what that gap is between race leader McElnay and Haslam when they come over the line next time. Fastest part of the circuit, flicking it right. Oh, around through that's the gap between the race leader, second place on the Black Norton is Ron Haslam, third place it's still Carl Fogarty, but look at Haslam, he's stretching away now from Fogarty, can he wind in number eight, Rob McElhinney? The point position at the moment, and they get 20 for the win, 17 for second, is that McElhinney leads the championship on 116, Haslam is only 15 points behind him, so Haslam certainly needs to do something in the top two and he really needs Rob McElnay not to finish. Well he does but the way he's going it's 3.71 seconds. Ron Haslam could see Rob McElnay in the distance which will help boost him along. He'll be able to see that he's pulling him down yard by yard. He's still the fastest man on the sack and he's one second under the lap record. That's an awful lot of time. One clear second under Carl Fogarty's lap record. Haslam has had a whole string of second places throughout this 1991 750cc Super Cup but pulled off in fact a win at Brands Hatch when it was just a little bit greasy in fact that was a very convincing win indeed that was the only win in the series he'd very much like to get another 20 points conversely Rob McElmay has had no less than five wins so 100 points out of five wins, that's why McElnay is sitting pretty on top of the pile, but Haslam now has got that gap under three seconds and closing still in dramatic fashion on the back end of Rob McElnay. Haslam just about using all the track and more, he's taking the very, very tightest lines. You can see for yourself just how close it is now. Visibly now that gap coming down, the Norton just about being stretched to the ultimate here at Alton Park. Over the line they go. The gap still just over three seconds, however, so McElnay managing to keep station, just keep the gap at a respectable distance, and really that's all he can do. Yeah, I think the, the gap is actually coming. It's 2.82 now, so he's not. He's taken virtually a second out of Rob McElnay. So uh, he's well within his sights, and I think there is a possibility it's going to be a grandstand finish without a doubt. Well, I hark back to just about all the other second places that Ron Haslam has had and he's led the race for so much of the distance only to have Rob McElnay steal it from under his nose at the 11th hour. Are we going to get a repeat dose 
or a return dose of that medicine served up by Ron Haslam. If he can get past the tail ender between him and Rob McElnay and have a good clear charge at the race leader on the Yamaha over the next couple of laps, there is a distinct possibility. Number 31, John Williams from Grimsby being lapped again there, put out of the picture. Haslam closing on McElnay, still in third place, it's Fogarty. And still in fourth, number six, John Reynolds. Yeah, well, Haslam visibly closer. He's closing down about a half a second a lap. It's going to be extremely close at the end. It will possibly come into back markers. It only needs one of these riders to catch a back marker at the wrong part on the circuit. Sometimes it's just impossible to know which way the back marker is going to go, and you have to just close the throttle for a split second and lose valuable time. But Ron is now well, has Rod, Rob McElay well within his sights. Set the watch running this time. Over the line goes McElney to complete that lap. Over the line goes Haslam. Still 2.72 seconds the gap. So coming down very, very slightly. Let's let the pictures tell the story here. You can see it all unfolding before your eyes, Haslam has now got a back marker again between himself and the race leader. And I think Ron Haslam might just have to struggle and McElney appears to have it under control. He does. Rob has picked his pace up and he's holding that gap now. It's only gone down a few tenths and in fact uh, Ron Haslam is closer but I think he's going to struggle. He has to make up two and a half seconds in uh, just over a lap. So to do that, or a lap and a half, to do that it's going to be quite... Incredible. He's going to be close, but I think if Rob can keep this pace up, he can hold that first position. This is the race then for first and second place in this leg one of the 750cc Super Cup round five here at Alton Park. And what a dramatic start it's been to the day's events. The race stopped after half a lap with an almighty tumble. All four riders, however, whilst a little bit knocked about, are okay, no serious injuries. After a short delay, the race got underway and it, all the promise which the first stage bore has been proven true here because it's unfolded with Rob McElney getting a brilliant start in the restart, taking advantage of that front row position, the pole position. Fogarty has absolutely ridden out of his leathers, but this man, Ron Haslam, number 20, having come back from a fairly lowly start 13th on lap one has walked through with the very best on the British scene to within fractions. Well, the gap is now down to 1.3 seconds, so he has 1.3 seconds to make up on the last lap. They're into the last lap. Ron Haslam can see Rob McElnay. Whether or not he can close it down is going to be another matter. I don't think he can, but I could be wrong. 30 years of age, Rob McElnay. Five wins already in the four rounds so far and that sounds odd because there are, there are in fact two 750 races at each round so we've actually had eight 750cc races so far and Rob McElney has won five of them Haslam has only won one of them but he's had a whole string of second places and it looks as though this is going to be another second place in 17 points to add to Ron Haslam's tally only one more round of Super Cup to come and that is from Mallory Park Meanwhile, while here at Alton, with 1.3 seconds separating them, there's the tail ender that Steve Parrish was talking about, can cause a problem. And indeed, he held up Rob McElney there because Haslam, one more tail ender, number 26 between them, that's Simon Watson. Wally Watson from Saffron Walden is just ahead of Ron Haslam. But Rob McElney now across the line, collects the chequered flag after 14 laps. Haslam. A brilliant second place, not quite good enough, but 17 points. There's your race winner, number eight, from Scotterthorpe, Humberside, Rob McElney. Big crowd here appreciating that. McElney certainly appreciates it. Ron Haslam, now let's see just what sort of sentiment Ron Haslam has for the winner, because I know for a fact Ron would dearly have loved that win. Yeah, Ron would have liked that win, and had he had a better start, I think there's been a great possibility that he would have got it, because by far the fastest man on the circuit, in fact, he, let, he set the fastest lap right at the end of the race, and uh, it just goes to prove that he's going to be a big, big problem for Rob McElnay in the second round. Confirmation then, Rob McElnay took that win from Haslam. 
the gap was two seconds at the end of the day. Fogarty rode hard for third. Reynolds, Morrison and Race up on top. 16 points. And McWilliams. Let's see.